Good morning, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We here at Covenant are connecting people in this hectic world to Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning um, through our FM pickup with a special thanks to Charlie Zachary for starting to set that up or Facebook Live or YouTube later on. You might notice the video being a little bit jerky Um, It's on our end, it is not on yours, so don't worry about it. Today we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together remotely. I invite you, as a reminder, to gather bread or a substitute and juice or maybe wine so that we might join together remembering Christ's sacrifice for each of us. Immediately following the worship service, you are invited to a Zoom coffee hour. You will have received that email from us on Friday, um, and Josh Fowler will be hosting that. There is still time to join us for Cinco de Bingo uh, this Tuesday night. You will have received an invitation from the deacons about that. Today is the last day to join us. It will be from 7 to 8.30 on this Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Bingo Zumo, (laughs) on on Tuesday night. We also continue to have our prayer meeting and check-in, really it's more check-in, and then we have a prayer at the end, um, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Next Sunday, if you are aware of this, is Mother's Day, and I have an assignment for you. Can you record one trait that you loved or love about your mother or a mother figure? We need it by Thursday, and you can email Adrian McCullough. I know you don't have his email, but email me, and I will get his email to you uh, with your answer. And we're going to show that in a video montage next uh, Sunday. So we already have a couple from the FM thing. These are all the announcements this morning. Let us gather together for the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let Let everything everything that that breathes praise praise the the Lord. Praise Praise the the Lord. Lord. This heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice.
my rights Take this light and let it shine, shine, shine Take this light and let it shine I lay me down, I'm not my own I belong to you alone Lay me down, lay me down It will be my joy to say your will, your way. It will be my joy to say your will, your way. It will be my joy to say your will, your way, always. You're the resurrection that we've waited for. You buried the night and you came with the morning. You're the King of Heaven. The praise is yours. The longer the quiet, the louder the chorus. Oh. Cause death is dead and gone with the winner We will sing a new song And hallelujahs flow like a river Coming back to life And reaching toward the night Your love is like springtime You're the living water God, we thirst for you. The dry and the barren will flower and bloom. You're the sun that's shining. You restore my soul. The deeper you call us, oh, the deeper we'll go. We will sing a new song, cause death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song, let hallelujah flow like a river coming back to life reaching towards the light your love is like springtime come tend the soil come tend the soil of my soul and like a garden and like a garden it will grow will grow We will sing a new song Cause death is dead and gone with the winter We will sing a new song And hallelujahs flow like a river Coming back 
to life and reaching toward the light. Your love is like springtime. Thank you. Friends, if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Would you please join with me in the prayer of confession, which you'll find in your bulletins, first together and then silently. Let us pray. God of mercy, your judgments are true, your wisdom unsearchable, your compassion unfailing. You are worthy of our complete trust and confidence. But the truth is, we prefer to put faith in ourselves in our own, and in our own plans and agenda. We are blind to our foolishness. We are deluded in our desire to be in control. We are impatient, unprepared for what truly matters, and focused instead on petty concerns. Forgive us, Lord, for our schemes and manipulations. Rather, grant us grace to look for you with anticipation and joy. Renew us to walk as your saints. Restore us to yourself and to one another. For the sake of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven, and that's the best news out there. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm 
Let me just tell you how much I love that song. It's great. All right, sermon time. Thank you, both Ashley and Connor. Thank you for singing that for me. Recently, I listened to an audio book called 99 Glimpses of Princess Margaret by Craig Brown. Princess Margaret, the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain, was a bombshell glamorous beauty in the 1950s. Maybe you've seen her in The Crown. She was unlucky in love, first with divorced Captain Peter Townsend, and then with her husband, Tony Armstrong Jones, who became Lord Snowden. By most accounts, Princess Margaret was a difficult person. Rude, demanding, and a stickler for royal, royal protocol, even though as time went by, she slid down the line of royal secession. She was also not very nice to her servants. On occasion, Princess Margaret would wake, Margaret would wake up the butler in the middle of the night after she had come home from some party in order to make her hot co cocoa or hot coke. <laughs> I don't know about that, okay? Hot cocoa or tea um, from her return, on her return. Other times, she would demand that someone stay up to greet her when she came, only to call between 1 or 2 a.m., saying the person didn't need to stay up any longer, that she was going to be later than that. All the while, expecting the servant to be up by 7.30 or 8 the next morning to walk her dogs. I was reminded of her as I read our passage from Luke, which we will be looking at this morning. The two sections, or pericopes, which is just a fi fancy word for a selection from a book, have to do with being watchful and faithful servants waiting for their master to return. And Jesus gave warnings to all who follow him to be watchful, always working, and not abusing their power until the master, our Lord, returns. So let's look at Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. Be dressed for action, says Jesus, and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Now, let's remind ourselves about slaves in the ancient Roman world. In the ancient Roman world, slaves counted up to 35% of the population, primarily because the Romans were enslaving rather than killing large numbers of their conquered enemies. Here, how slaves were treated was entirely dependent on the character and mood of the owner. But there were major differences between slavery in the ancient world and the slavery that uh, was experienced here in the United States. First, race differences played no role in the ancient world, and an enslaved person could not be distinguished by appearance. Secondly, Education was encouraged and enhanced a slave's value. Many slaves functioned in sensitive and highly responsible positions, and persons sometimes sold themselves into slavery to escape poverty or pay off debt. And this is something else I learned this week. Slaves could even own their own slaves, which is kind of weird. Okay, so. 
Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, the master will fasten his belt. You know, like I'm wearing this robe this morning. They, would, they had these outer robes, and they'd stuff them inside their belt in order to work. And have the slaves sit down to eat, and the master will come and serve them. This is an amazing image. If the master finds the servants awake and ready to serve, the master instead will serve the servants at the table. Verse 38. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You know, just like trying to figure out when a robber is going to rob your house, it's kind of like trying to calculate the Lord's return, the second coming. It's, this is not where we should be spending all of our time because it's inadequate and inappropriate behavior for the Christian to spend all their time on that. They have work to do. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. We'll come back to that. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? Okay, this is cool. Peter's biblical question showed his biblical understanding because Jewish stories of a master and servant were often about God and Israel. Now, when I speak about Israel, I'm talking about ancient Israel, not the modern uh, state of Israel today. So, Peter is asking, is the next parable or the following parable that Jesus was telling, is it about the disciples or is it about ancient Israel, the nation as a whole? Let's look at it and maybe you can decide. And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Excuse me, I'm sorry, at the proper time. Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, My master is delayed in coming. And if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour when he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Okay, (laughs) let's explain this a little bit. Ancient Jewish law, the Torah, distinguished between intentional and unintentional wrongs. If you knew or know what you are to do and don't do it, the punishment could be as violent as being cut to pieces or a severe beating. If you don't know what you are to do, you'd still be punished with a light beating, whatever that means. Punishment, according to Jewish law, is given according to knowledge and the power you have. And then the rest of verse 48, which most people know this verse, From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Before we get to practical applications, who do you think that parable was in reference to that we just read? Ancient Israel or someone else? Well, here's the beauty of scripture. Jesus was probably referring originally to ancient Israel, the Israel around him at that time. But today, we can also interpret this parable to be about Christian leadership, as in pastors, teachers, anyone in leadership in the church, and even leadership in general. Okay, practical application. Number one, 
God will come to us and our job is to wait. Verses 35 and 36 say, 36 say, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Now, none of us like to wait, do we? We are impatient people. We don't like to wait in line. We don't like for, to wait for our Amazon packages to arrive or even for our food to be prepared. But that, friends, was all before the arrival of COVID-19 and the subsequent quarantine. Now we wait whether we like to or not. We wait to get our hair cut. Ah, we wait to hug our grandchildren. We wait to go on vacation away from our home. We wait to be employed again. We wait for there to be food in the fridge. We wait to have medical insurances, insurance. We wait for a vaccine. My friends, we are getting very good at waiting. To wait for our Lord to return, who will bring about the new heavens and the new earth, who will bring about perfect justice, righting all that is wrong, is not about being passive. To wait for the Lord is to be active. To wait for the Lord, no one likes this one, is to work on relationships, to seek forgiveness, to seek healing, even when we worry have, about how the other person is going to respond. To wait for the Lord is to continue to serve, to continue to help others. This past week, I was getting out of my car at my local Lidl with my mask on, and I look over and I see Neil and Peggy Bagnell, two of our great covenant members. I was excited to see them from a safe distance. Actually, Knox and I are really excited to see any of you in person these days. It's been too long. And they both said, you are just the person we were looking for, which made me feel great. Oh, really? I said, yes. We have got four boxes of canned go goods in the back of our truck. Where is the Axe Food Pantry? Our covenant people are continuing to serve and give even in this time, especially in this time. That is waiting for the Lord. To wait for the Lord is to continue to serve even when it is far away. This past Sunday, during our Facebook Live worship, Pastor Israel, who is the pastor of our sister church, Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, asked us to pray for their members who've lost their jobs during this pandemic. Uh, now, the members of Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church are not wealthy people. Many work in the tourist industry. They are taxi drivers and the like. But let me tell you this. They are godly people who serve, who pray, who know their Bibles. They even know their church history really well. Well, within a couple of hours, Covenant's leadership, spurred on by Deacon Debbie Decker, contacted Pastor Israel to find out what the specific needs were. And he answered that there were between three and family, five families who needed medicine and food. And Covenant is responding by sending $1,000 to Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church. They should receive the wire tomorrow to help our dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Now, for many of us, $1,000 is a lot of money, but not a lot of money. But it is going to help these families who cannot afford food or medications. It's such a gift. And if you'd like to contribute to offset some of that cost, just earmark your giving. To wait for the Lord is to be faithful in prayer. I don't know about you, but through this whole pandemic, I am praying even more than ever for a vaccine, for those who put their lives on the line every day so I can have food, for that book that I really want to read, or access to uh, hospitals, or keeping our neighborhoods safe. 
To wait for the Lord is to continue to worship, to read scripture, to sing hymns or praise songs, to be aware of God's gift of creation. Wasn't yesterday gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Today, not so much, but yesterday. I'll take yesterday. Second practical application. Be wise and prudent managers of God's house. Jesus asked in verses 42 and 43, who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. This passage is often used at ordination or commissioning services for when Christians join together and pray for those who are being entrusted with ministry in God's church. Those who preach and teach and lead the people of God have a tremendous responsibility to care for God's children. And it is why in most denominations there is a prolonged time of discernment study, examination, and counsel in order for someone to be called to ordination and to ministry. It is also why there is a time of preparation and study and examination for officers of the church. But as we know and hear and maybe have even experienced, the church is not exempt from abuse of others and misuses of power. And I know that victims of abuse of those in church leadership applaud efforts to bring abusers' acts to light and to hold them accountable for their actions. The New Testament reminds those called by God to lead and teach God's people that they will be judged with greater strictness. It is why in our gospel lesson, Jesus gave such a graphic description of what will happen to the unfaithful or the idle slave. But lest you think, Phew, I'm off the hook. Thank God I'm not a pastor or youth director or elder or deacon. Think again. Many, all of us have leadership roles, whether in your family or your work, your school, your volunteer positions. Are you taking that responsibility seriously? Are you leading in humility and love and care? How are you being a faithful servant to God? Final practical application. To whom much is given, much will be required. That's what the end of verse 48 says. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. I often hear this verse in my head. So does Knox. In fact, he told me that his father has told him all his life that that verse scares him, scares my father-in-law. You know, I think I hear it in my mind because I know how privileged I am compared to many. From a stable family, to educational opportunities, to the color of my skin, to being an American, to having a job, to having health care, to having food in my um, fridge and pantry, to having a full tank of gas with no place to go. Um, I know that I am blessed. God has given many of us blessings, and not just material blessings, but also spiritual blessings, access to his word. You know there are still places in the world where people don't have access to the Bible. The freedom to worship, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the amazing gift of our Lord, who still prays for us each day. Do you think about that? God is, Jesus is still praying for us. And with those blessings come great responsibilities. If God has blessed us so much, how are we using our blessings to the glory of God? How are we using our many gifts for Christ and his kingdom? Because our passage makes it clear 
that we will be held accountable. When the master returns, will he find that we have used the gifts given to us by him well? We've all been given duties in our families, in our work, in our church, in the world, and the world cries out for help. Will we hear those cries and say, okay, God, use me however you want? And I know it's scary to step out in faith, but here's what I know, and I'm reminded every day, that God will give us never more than we can handle. And sometimes I say, okay, I'm at my limit, God. Obviously, you expect more from me than I can give, but okay. And that God is with us through it all. You know, I find this verse daunting. To, at least it is for me. But here I cling to the grace of God, which pours out mercy. I pray that we will all use our gifts, our time, our monies, our very lives for God. And I also know this, that I will never use all of my gifts to the glory of God. And when I falter, and when I blow it, then I come to Christ and say, forgive me, Lord. And Christ in love says, you are forgiven. Go in peace to love and serve me. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, some of these parables are hard. You are loving and gracious, and you demand much from us as you ought. Forgive us when we falter and fail, and help us by the power of your Spirit to serve you with joy and love. We ask in your son's name. Amen. Let us join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We're going to take our prayer requests right now. Um, let me get my sheet, and I know Knox has some too. And then we will be having our offering. Uh, I have several. First of all, uh, the Stutz family, who are neighbors of the Sacketts, their mother passed away this past Thursday. We want, of course, to pray also for Josh Fowler's Grandfather, Louis, suffering from dementia. He's been getting out of the house. They had a hard time finding him, so pray about that. Of course, lost jobs, the vaccine, those who are ill, health care workers. Clayton Luchet, prayers for Ava. Oh, his granddaughter, she fell and broke her wrist yesterday. Oh, poor thing. From the Cassidys, um, Audrey Murphy, her mom passed. And the Counts, their son Henry, uh, possibly diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So we pray for healing for him. Let us take our offering at this time. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. 
Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. Redeemer Lord, long ago on a distant road to a place called Emmaus, your disciples came to recognize your presence with them through the breaking of bread. Today we, your disciples, journey upon far different roads, but our need for you is the same. We are weary. We need your renewing presence before we continue on our way. Come to us in the breaking of bread and the sharing of wine. Let us feel the warmth of your life-giving blood flowing through us. Let us feel the fullness of your love as we share bread and body together. In this holy meal, lift our stooped hearts the burden of sin and guilt. Release us from the condemnation of our conscience and help us walk with bolder strides the path before us. Together, make us part of your body in the world, bearing your creative and redeeming love to a hurting creation. As we share this, your victory feast, fill us with energy to live out our faith in the arena of our daily work and responsibilities. O oh God, we lift in prayer today little Ava, and we pray that you will heal her quickly of her broken wrist. We pray for Henry with his possible diagnosis of Crohn's disease, and we pray for healing. Be with all of those who have lost their jobs through this economic downturn and pandemic. We pray, O oh God, quickly to bring about a vaccine. We pray for all of those who are ill with COVID-19, all of those who care for them, and all of the, our first responders as well, and all of our government officials, God, who make, are having to make difficult decisions, the tension between economic needs and the pandemic itself. Give them wisdom, oh God. Be with Josh's uh, parents who are caring for his grandfather, Louis. Also be with the Stutz family, God. Give them your comfort as well as the Murphy family, O oh Lord. And after we leave this table, send us out with renewed courage to proclaim the faith and hope within us to a world that needs both. For we pray it in your name as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope you've gotten your um, supplies together. On the night that our Lord was uh, betrayed and arrested, he was in the guest room of a house with his disciples and friends and during celebrating the Passover meal. And during that meal, he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again in glory. 
I invite you now to take a piece of bread and let us join together eating it. This is Christ's body broken for you. in the cup. This is Christ's blood shed for you. Will you join me in the prayer of thanksgiving? Which is over here in the bulletin. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love be your love reaching out into the life of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you join with me in our closing hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ? Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Breath of God and the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again. Earth can breathe again. Both the bird around moves abound. Christ is able to make us one. At the table he sets the tone. Teaching people to live to bless. Love in word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Past the word around flows abound. Jesus calls us in, sends us out. Bearing fruit in our world of doubt. Gives us love to tell, bread to share. God, Emmanuel, everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Would you join with me in Covenant's Bible verse for the, for the year, Jeremiah 28, 20. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for harm to, to give, give you a hope with a future with hope <laughs> jeremiah 29 11 i didn't have it in front of me obviously i need to memorize it ah receive the benediction friends go in peace to love and serve the lord and the blessings of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you now and always amen have a great week. Join us for the coffee, Zoom coffee hour.